When I was 17, after oh, working at Chamberlain Library for my summer job, I was trained in the basics of shelving books. So I came to Emerson Branch and I talked to Mrs. Carney, who I knew. I said, oh, Mrs. Carney, are you looking for help in the library? And she immediately, her face lit up and said, how about Wednesday night? I could not believe I got a job that easily. And I turned to my brother who had the car and said, what do you think? Can you drive me here back and forth? So anyway, I got the job Wednesday night, three hours. I was so excited because I had my mind on three records that I wanted to buy. I didn't have a record player at that time, but I wanted the Beatles' White Album and probably a Joni Mitchell album. And that's what I got. I did buy with my first check from the county. We moved to Seaside when I was in fourth grade and entering into Emerson Branch Library at that time, which was in the basement of the Grange Hall, it had everything a young girl would love. I found Heidi and all the classics of childhood there, and I was a reader, I was very introverted, and so to me, uh, going to the library was fun. In 75, I, I, uh, we had a, a big opening. We were seven, I believe seven people working here, from three to seven, and I believe we were at that time the biggest branch for the county. So during that summer of 1978, um, I was a 30-hour person and, and uh, worked uh, five days a week, Tuesday through Saturday. But then I was getting married that summer, and since we had a meeting room at the branch, I thought, well, that would be where my wedding would be, and my sisters would help decorate it. It would be a family affair and I would invite my library friends, my library coworkers too, and that's what we did. We had, um, it was a Saturday, I, I was supposed to work, but I took a vacation day, and uh, Janet Salmons, my um, coworker, was manning the desk. And at four o'clock after the wedding ceremony, I noticed that it was 4.10 and there were still people coming in, and I knew I had to get to the door to lock it. So. Uh, I went to the desk and got the key and locked the front doors and one of our regular patrons, Walter Avery, was coming up the stairs and he said, what's going on? And I knew because I was in my wedding dress that, oh my gosh, yes, he wouldn't know what was going on. I said, oh, but today's my wedding day and he congratulated me. Mrs. Carney, who was a very quiet, maybe a stereotypical librarian, had a wonderful warmth about her. And she was so accepting of everyone. She was also a wonderful reference librarian. I took lessons from her. Uh, we have a tradition in Seaside Branch of being a very friendly place, meaning that everyone is welcome here. And we can help, we try to help, if we can, anybody with a question or needs information. But I, I really love libraries because they are a place where you can self-educate yourself, where you can investigate. If you have a question, you can get answers to it. I brought my children here, and uh, as they grew up and learned their alphabet, I would have them help shelve books. And uh, my Two of my daughters have followed me into the library field. My daughter, Amelia Converse, is now working at Monterey Peninsula College, and she is in the library. She's operations supervisor there. And my daughter, my second daughter, Cynthia Sotong, has moved across the United States and landed in Princeton and, got, and started working part-time at the Princeton Public Library and now got a full-time job very recently and uh, is working as an associate library person in processing. Well, if you're conservative, you may say it's strictly books. 
but um, there was um, an early philosopher, Raganathan. He believes that libraries are like an amoeba and always changing in, in society. So it is a, a growing evolutionary thing of what, what is a library. Some people do have their backs up about, oh, no, that's not the service of a library to have movies, sound, uh, music, but these are libraries in their own way. Music libraries, film movies, uh, film libraries. We have audiobooks, which helps people because if you think about it, some people can't read books because of eyesight, so they go to audio. And if we all remember our ancestors, what started the library? Stories do, and each person has a story. This is what libraries are. People say that maybe libraries won't continue in the future. Everybody will have a library in their back pocket on their phone. That could happen. But I think you also need uh, human touch. You need somebody to go and ask about, how, how can I do this? <laughs> how does this machine work? Who is Homer? What is um, the Trojan War? Who's Shakespeare? Who are the philosophers and the psychologists and the thinkers of this world? So hopefully that will continue. I will miss my coworkers when I leave, but I, I, I've, I've been here a span of 50 years. I haven't worked <laughs> a full 50 years, though, if you really, I, I was a part-time person. I, I raised three children. I brought those little children here and told them to behave while I did. I made cards for um, the library. It was only a 10 hour job and I figured, and I always got permission by, by my supervisors if I could bring them. So it helped a, a, a mother, a working mother you might say, with childcare. If I, what I will miss are, are the people that I have met over the counter. Some I admire tremendously. I've learned from a lot of people. But I won't be that far. I, I will return to this branch to be volunteer, and maybe even if the system needs me to substitute.